Welcome my fellow vinyl addiction addicts to another Dave's Corner or Dave's video blog I guess. I'm going to do a video recording of this instead of doing it live um, just in case I mess up I can do a little editing and all that but this topic always comes up in the group of how to clean your records so I'm going to show you what I do. There's many different ways this is just how I do it. So, um, you can buy very expensive vacuum cleaners and they're well worth the money. Um, if you buy a lot of dirty records, I can see maybe that's why you'd want to, you know, invest in something like that. A lot of my collection is my personal collection and in fact probably about 70% of it is albums that I bought brand new. So they're not really dirty um, versus some used albums that I've bought um, at certain places and sometimes where I've gone to uh, homes or to um, you know different types of sales and you buy in bulk um, sometimes you find out that those people didn't take care of their records as well as you do. So when you run into that that's when you sometimes need to clean them. So there's many different ways again like I said um, maybe in part two or something I'll look up some videos or I'll get with a good buddy Bruce of mine and maybe we can do a video on wood gluing. Um, I think there actually is a video on vinyl addiction on wood gluing from Bruce um, but I'll have to see. Um, by all means do a search on it and by all means do a search on record cleaning um, in the group and you're going to find a plethora of answers on it. So anyway, just going to show you a quick video. We're going to edit it. I'm not going to show you through the whole process and all that, but basically this is what I do when I'm cleaning my record. So um, get you some sort of uh, cleaning solution, whether you do it in the sink or you do it in a, um, you know, a, a kit, I guess you could say. So the most important thing is that you use distilled water. So we're going to put distilled water in here and luckily for this system and a lot of other ones it actually has a line uh, that you put the water level up to. So that's what we have done. We put it up to that level. We're now going to insert the cleaning And the wheels. So this particular unit, and I know a lot of you know what it is, I'm not going to state because I'm not going to sell or promote any type of uh, unit even though I'm sort of promoting I guess this one since I'm using it, but it has different sections so you can do 45s, you can do 10 inches, and you can do the 12 inch album. So I'm um, setting it there, um, basically get you a cleaning solution and all I do is get a cap full of my solution and then I pour it down the middle. Then I grab an album. Also with this kit it comes with these. Um, I guess you could use them if you don't have anything. I highly suggest using microfiber um, towels. That's what I use to uh, wipe mine down with. So um, these you can use, um, I guess, but I use these. So um, here we go. So we get the first set, get an album ready. I got a pad or a set up here to the left as you can see. And this is where I'm going to lay the album um, to do some other things. And uh, let me go grab a couple of things and I'll be right back. <clears throat> Okay, so put the solution now um, into the kit and I'm going to grab my first record. Here's a suggestion also. Um, when you buy a record, let's put it in here. Um, they normally, unless you bought it from a nice person like me, they don't keep it in um, 
inner sleeve protectors with rice paper and all that. Um, some people that are real picky will not place them in one of these until they've actually cleaned the record. Um, this one is really not that dirty, so I actually put it into um, the sleeve just to pay, put it in there because it was in a bad one. So you slap it in here and you spin it. And I spin it for, I count to 20, basically is what I do. And for some of you that are sitting there counting, um, I'm not sure where I'm at, so I'm just going to guesstimate. But basically, I think um, the instructions on this one is to like get two full revolutions, um, but I generally do about five. And it all depends on how dirty the record is, too. If the record's not that dirty, then you really don't have to clean it that much. So then once you've gone clockwise, then you go counterclockwise, generally the same amount of times that you've spun that record. And you do that, and you get it clean. And I'm sure there's lots of YouTube videos on this that you can look up, but I figured while you're in the group, you might as well watch it and see for yourself. So as you can see, I pull it out, I'm letting it drip to get all the excess off, and then I lay it down, and then with a microfiber, I'm going to go around and basically kind of rub the stuff in there and dry it off at the same time. Generally, if you, good, if you have good lighting, you can see the little spots on the record that might have some blemishes or other marks. And when that occurs, I uh, will generally get another device. And I bought this one. It's a cleaning brush. Besides the ones that you use to just regularly wipe your records with um, while you're before play, um, I get one of these. And, um, Oops, let's move this out of the way. I'm gonna put this over here. This one's a little dirty from the last time that I... Sometimes you can get um, a toothbrush, preferably a brand new one, and get all the excess off. So, <clears throat> I've wiped it down and now I'm basically Basically what I'm doing with this cleaning pad is I'm actually kind of putting the remainder of that solution deeper into the groove um, for really dirty records. What I'll do is some of this solution that I put into the kit, I will actually um, spray some on the record and then clean it that way to get a really dirt um, clean on that record. So now that I've done that, laid it out, and of course, I'm going to put it in a record. There's two, th two ways, two things you can do. So let me pull this, get this in a better view. You know, when you go to the office, and now the office is starting to get rid of all their folder uh, organizers and all that, so anytime I see some of these, um, and they're going to throw them away in the office, I'll raise my hand and say, hey, I'll take them off your hands if, if I'm allowed to. Another thing you can use to dry your records off is go to, you know, Target, Walmart, your local um, five and dime shop or whatever, and just and buy a a, a record or a dish. I'm sorry, a dryer, and you can place them on that as well too. So they actually fit pretty good. I generally prefer this one because the black one that I have is metal and it doesn't have any rubber, where this one has a rubber um, coating on it. 
I think it's rubber or it's it's some sort of coating. If you want to comment below and tell me what this coating is if you know. And as you see, it makes it stack it up and then you can stack the records. So that's what we're going to do. So anyway, I'm going to clean a few records this way. I'm going to do one more before I stop this video for a little bit. And then we will um, uh, edit and bring them back and then I'll do a final uh, discussion on record cleaning. So, I generally find a place, as I'm not sure if you can see, this one is a little dirty. Um, it's got some blemishes, you could say, on there. And uh, even when you play it, you hear the little bit of crackle and stuff like that. Now, just because you clean your record is not going to guarantee that you're going to get rid of pops crackle and, and all that. It could just be that it was played on a uh, less than preferred uh, turntable and needle setup. So, of course, back in the day, a lot of people used um, um, home um, stereo systems and they had the little flip needles on them and all that and that was fine for them. They weren't um, audiophiles, I guess you could call it. So. Um, my parents had one, a Grundig. They, Mom still has it. Um, I want to refurbish it one of these days. That's my plan. And um, so, like I said, just because you clean the record doesn't mean it's going to get rid of all pops and clicks. So, um, you may still have them. What it will do, it'll get rid of all of the dirt and grind that has collected on these records through the years and decades, especially on older albums that are from the 70s and 60s and 50s and all that, especially the 60s and 50s. Um, you're not really sure what kind of condition you're going to get those records in when you get them. So you really got to inspect them well when you buy them. Um, so instead of uh, drying this one, this is another way I do it on dirty albums. So before I dry it, I get the cleaning pad and I rub that solution really good into the record. Flip it over. Clean it, get that solution in there, set it off to the side, get your microfiber towel out, and take off all the excess fluid. Once you've got the excess fluid off, you set it into your rack and you let it dry. So I'm going to do these records and then I'll come back and we'll do a final discussion on the topic of how to clean your records. Hope you enjoy another day's phono video blog. This is an album that I haven't cleaned yet. So let's see what it sounds like, okay? It's an older one. This is the Yardbirds Greatest Hits. And um, we're going to slap it down, and we're going to see what it sounds like before we clean it. Here we go. Start at the beginning of the groove, but turn it up a bit. Hopefully, <clears throat> the overlords do not mute. Uh, this video because of its contents. So uh, listen carefully. You can hear the box when it clicks. Hopefully this
mic is picking up the boxing clicks. So, anyway, hopefully you heard the pops and clicks. We're going to clean this record, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to play it. And hopefully, Proof in the Pudding will take some of the pops and clicks out. So, let's find out. So, here's the Yardbirds. Greatest Hits. On original Epic stereo. And um, so, since it was a little dirty, as it still has the fluid on the record, I'm going to use my extra cleaning brush. As you can see, it's just flat, but it's um, it's got a good cleaning pad on it. And um, this record uh, definitely has seen its better days. See a whole lot of fingerprints, smudges, just overall dirtiness on this album and its grooves. So I'm taking quite a bit of time on this one because I want this one to actually be proof in the pudding and that we do hear a difference in the cleaning. Again, like I said earlier, it's not guaranteed it's going to take pops and clicks out, but it should give me a better listening enjoyment. It's not that I don't like pops and clicks. Technically, really, actually, I don't. When I listen to records, I like it to, to, I like to just hear the music. I don't want to hear pops and clicks like. Some people think that it's a nostalgia type thing. Well, I guess if that's what you were used to and that's what you grew up with is uh, pops and clicks, but I didn't. Uh, so anyway, there it is. Um, put it at an angle. As you can see, you can see some scratches. Um, the fingerprints aren't, have been pretty much taken off. But there's definitely still blemishes and all that. So we're going to find out later. I'm going to let it dry. Once it's fully dried and all that, we'll put it back on the, on the turntable and we'll give it a listen and see what we got. We've cleaned the record and now we're going to hear what it sounds like. Did the cleaning make a difference in the playback of this album? Um, let's find out. Yes, it did. It did make a difference. Um, there's not as much surface noise. Um, we can go back. All right, and listen to. So I've completed at least my small task. So I've only cleaned one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, sixteen albums. Um, that's not a whole lot. Um, sometimes I've done sessions of twenty-five and even you know fifty at a time, um, but. I'm not that adventurous today. So anyway, um, what we were going to say at the end, oh yeah, so um, cleaning records, it's not guaranteed, like I said, to get rid of pops and clicks and surface noises, but life is surface noises, right? Um, but um, to have as least amount in your playback on your vinyl records is uh, what's achievable, at least for me it is. Uh, hope this video um, has uh, shown you a couple of things. Like I said, there's many different ways to, uh, to clean your records. You can clean them by hand. Um, you can use devices such as this, vacuum systems. And speaking of vacuum systems, I'd love to try one to see if they do make a big difference. I've heard that they do between um, the manual cleaning um, 
devices and vacuum devices. So, if there's any members of the vinyl addiction community and you would love to uh, help with my uh, videos and experimentation, please send me a message and I can tell you where to send a vacuum cleaning system to me. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, anyway, so hopefully we have some uh, extremely rich members here and uh, they can uh, afford to spend the money and just send it my way. Wink, wink. Say no more. <clears throat> anyway, um, we're going to cut this off. Hope you enjoyed this um, little blog. And um, by all means, uh, send me uh, messages or comment below and let me know of another topic you'd like me to talk about. Um, I like doing these things. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video blog.